at the moment I don't really see the project working. Honestly, when I see the code like that, I feel like I'm too stupid for Swift. So this is way better. I got all 12 books. I would fucking love to kiss Jeff Bezos. Bald head right now. I want to build an app that will give you all the information for any book on a given bookshelf just from one photo. When you're at the airport, when you're at the train station without much time, you can just pull out your phone, snap one picture, and you get all the ratings, all the categories, descriptions for any books in front of you. Now, at this moment, I have no idea whether this is actually possible, but I don't really have time to worry about it because I set the goal of having a working prototype by tomorrow night. So let's do it. I'll definitely cut out the let's do it, but... As a first step, I needed to make sure that what I wanted to build was actually possible. I needed a proof of concept, and for that, I had to find services that lets you detect books from a picture. I started out with the Google Object Detection API, which supposedly can recognize any kind of object on a given image. Oh no, <laughs> but it's basically saying that this one here on the, on the side is a packaged good. And that's it. You already saw there that the Google API had trouble with my photo, but when I used images from the internet, it would generally do quite well. So I thought, hey, maybe this is just a problem with this one picture. And I decided to code everything up in Python, which also included creating those bounding boxes around the books myself, just to see that the whole pipeline works. All right, so this is wonderful. Right, so it generally works, but I've taken some image from the internet now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take another picture of my bookshelf. I'll put it on here, make it an API request, and then I'll again try to find the binding boxes, meaning those boxes around those books. And then for each book, I wanna have a request made to then figure out the text on that book. Now, unfortunately, this is where everything went to shit. The Google API couldn't handle any of the pictures that I took from my bookshelf. I mean, honestly, it's not gonna get a lot better than this quality-wise, but if it's now not working, then I kind of have the feeling that this will not work ever. Shit. Ah, uh, now we have a bookcase. Which I guess makes sense. Yeah, so now we have the whole thing. It's not looking good. Now at this point in the project, I was starting to get desperate and even thinking about building my own object detection algorithm, which honestly would have been really, really cool to document, but just creating the kind of data and pictures the algorithm would have needed would have taken me days. Yeah, so at the moment, I don't really see the project working. I mean, I know that there's other APIs, so that's my only chance right now. Um, I'm not I'm not going to build my own algorithm right now in 36 hours. I'm just going to check out the other APIs now um, to see whether there's something there. If not, this might be um, the first failed project on the channel. The first alternative API I tried was the Amazon Recognition API, which also had an online demo, meaning I could just upload the two pictures that the Google API was struggling with and see whether it would now work better. Okay, but this is really good. This is really good. Because for both of those images, it's doing really well. This was where Google API said, Cloud Vision API said, this is a packaged good and nothing else is on the image. Oh, this is, this is giving me hope. This is giving me hope. This could work. Seeing this on the online demo is one thing, but I also had to make it work within my script, meaning I rewrote my Python script to fit to the new API and tried out a few different photos. So this is way better. I got all 12 books. I literally got all 12 books. That is honestly amazing because like literally 20 minutes ago, I thought this was done. We were not going to get this done. Like this was impossible. Now that I finally could detect each of the books from a given image, I could go on to step two, recognize the text blocks in the image and then assign each one of them to a binding box. For that as well, I used the Amazon recognition API. First run through, what we're expecting 
is my bookshelf, image 7468, this bookshelf here should appear and we want to have rectangles on there for the books. Now this one is a bad example, but this one here. I have a rectangle for books and then in white, those should be in white. And then we have additional rectangles for all the text. So like this, in blue. This is what we expect. I'm going to run it. It's going to take a little while because it has to make the requests here. And there we go. There we go. And that is amazing. This is honestly incredible, especially after the rough start. Now, using the text from each one of the books, I had to make one last API call to get the information and ratings for the given book. Originally, I was hoping I could use the Goodreads API as they have an incredible amount of ratings for any book, but unfortunately, they don't offer that service anymore. So instead, I went with the Google Books API. And one cool advantage of that one is that I could put in anything without specifying exactly what I was looking for. I didn't have to say like, oh, I'm looking for this author or this title, but instead I just had to say like what my search term is and then it would work as if it was a normal Google search machine. The most amazing thing though about this API was something else. Wait, this is free? I don't have to sign up for anything? Nope, no need to sign up for anything. And on top of that, we can ask for the info of a million books per day, which should be more than enough. As a first test, I then sent out the text from one of the binding boxes of the books, and I actually got all the info back that I wanted. It's working, it's working. The whole process from taking the photograph and actually getting the information from a book on there is working. I'm going to do it now that I do it for all the books in here um, because right now I'm just doing it for one book. Shouldn't take long and then we'll see it again. So when I press this, what I should get is a mix always of my search term and then the book we got out of it and then we can compare to the actual screenshot which I'm actually going to pull up. Okay, so the first book, David Epstein range, range David Epstein. Then we have Matthew Sleepwalker, we why. It says why we sleep, Matthew Walker. That is the right book, it's right here. Overall, from this photo, we got 8 out of 12 books correct. And more importantly, for the ones that we didn't match, it's kind of easy to see why the algorithm went wrong. So this proof of concept was working really well. And that meant the only thing left to do is turn this script into a fully functioning mobile app. The app was going to be super simple. I just wanted a home screen with a button where the user can say they want to scan a bookshelf. So I first created the background image for that screen using Mid Journey. Ah, oh, they're all actually really pretty. <laughs> Look at that! What is that? That must be the biggest fucking rabbit I've ever seen. And honestly, besides that, this image would be nice. So I think I might be cutting. I think I might be cutting. <laughs> I think I might be cutting the rabbit out. Yeah. So that humongous rabbit is now actually part of the Bookscot app, although you can't really see it because it's hidden. After setting the home screen up, I literally spent the rest of the evening trying to get the API request working in Swift that I created before in Python. And honestly, there's no way I could have done this without ChatGPT. The difficulty making this work in Swift, at least for me, obviously, compared to Python or JavaScript was insane, which meant that I pretty much just used ChatGPT as my translator at this stage. I'd give it the code I wrote in Python and say, can you tell me how you would do that in Swift? which led to me feeling pretty stupid at times and having very little understanding of what was going on. Honestly, when I see the code like that, I feel like I'm too stupid for Swift. There's so many things you have to worry about, think about. If it works, what I should get back is what I want to then search for with Google. So everything that is, you know, each separate book, basically. So if I click cancel here, it takes a bookshelf photo. 
sends it to the API. Nothing's happening. After hours of working on the API request in Swift, it was still not working properly. However, my goal was for day one to get all the API request logic out of the way. So I spent another hour on it and then gave it one last test run. Now what should happen is that it makes the request and it gives us back the list of all the books on the thing. So now when I click cancel, we're gonna make the request. It's gonna take a bit of time. So if I click cancel here, we have something there that says going to make the API request now. And here we go. It's, <laughs> it's unfortunately completely moved to the side, but it's all working. Like this is literally what I wanted to build in terms of logic, like the data I have, the rest of it is just arranging it, which is crazy. Since the logic is working, day two of building the app was actually pretty relaxed. The only thing left to do was a bit of styling, adding an individual book page with more information, cleaning up the code and getting everything ready for the deployment to my phone. I think this is it. At that moment, I thought I finished everything, which was 11.25 a.m. on the Sunday, so way earlier than I thought I'd be done with this. However, the deployment was a lot harder and software updates meant it took another three and a half hours until I could finally try out my app. I'm opening the app and that's my app. That's the mid journey generated background. I'm going to now say I'm going to scan the bookshelf. It should open my camera. Need to take a photo to be able to search for the books. Wonderful. Um, so I prepared two sets here. The first one is this one. Those are the similar books that we already use. So let's see. I'm going to say use photo. Getting all book information. That is actually looking good. I've never done this part before, right? Because it wouldn't work on the simulator. And it should now give me back. Fuck me. The app actually works. It actually works exactly how I imagined it. And after that, I tried it out on the second set of books and unfortunately it failed because the image was too big to send it to an API. But I just spent a little bit more time, fixed that bug, added a redo button as well as an app icon. And then I tried it out once more at home where everything worked. But since I thought it's boring to just try it out at home. So the app is all done, it works at home, um, but I thought we we're gonna take it outside as well and look at an actual bookstore where we can figure out whether it's actually working with any of the bookshelves in there. It's getting all the information I mean. And there we go. All right, so Hungry Ghost is here, right there. What else? The making of another major motion. Oh, Tom Hanks. Oh, there we go. Nice. And the Cassandra Complex. I mean, the thing is they're all new books. So we're, we're not going to get a lot of ratings, but the Cassandra Complex is here. So generally it works. And at least I can see, I can see all, the, all the descriptions, the number of pages, all that stuff. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So it's been a couple of days um, since I finished the app and it gave me some time to reflect and a few thoughts that I wanted to share about the whole process. Now, the first question is obviously how good is the app doing? What's the performance like? And overall, pretty damn impressive, at least from my point of view. For any given bookshelf, when I try it out here at home, it gives me about 60 to 70% of the books, um, which honestly, for like 12 hours of work, is pretty good, at least in my opinion. Now, the biggest problem with the app is actually getting the ratings, which honestly, I didn't think would be that big of a problem. But the thing here is that we're using the Google Books API, which overall has very few ratings, even for very popular books. If you compare it to Goodreads, they might have like more than half a million ratings for certain books, which on Google, uh, which on the Google API might have like 100 ratings or something like that. But otherwise, considering the use case that we're talking about at the beginning of the video, like going to the airport, quickly grabbing a picture and then finding a cool book, that already works, which is really impressive or makes me really happy. Um, and I think it's the coolest app I've built so far on this channel. However, 
there is a downside to this because this app generally the the most or the biggest part of this app is data fetching and sending data communicating with apis which i'm really bad at when it comes to swift because i'm not a swift pro and that meant i often asked ChatGPT for help or actually i asked ChatGPT for help all the time however the problem with this is that I now feel a little bit disconnected to the app. Like I'm not as proud of it as I am of other projects that I built because it feels like most of the stuff actually came from ChatGPT. The amount of stuff that I had to build when it comes to user experience and building like a few tiles or a page here or there is actually quite minimal. So even though I love the end product, I don't feel super proud or like very like ownership over this, over this app. And that is because the code that is written there was actually too complicated for me to write myself. And that leads me to the next thing. Swift to me seems incredibly complicated and that is not a bad verdict on the language itself, but rather I'm actually admiring the people that are writing Swift for a living. There's so many things you have to remember when you're writing requests for data compared to like when you, when you look at the Python code that I wrote or through the things that I do in JavaScript normally. However, that means for the next few projects, I'll probably use another language. And that leads me to the last point. Like there will be a lot more projects on this channel. So if you enjoyed this kind of documentation of a software project, Please subscribe to the channel, but also feel free to give me some kind of input on like what kind of projects you'd like to see in the future. Because ultimately this channel is about building projects using technology. On the other hand, if you made it this far and you didn't really like it, let me know about it. Feel free to hit the dislike button, but also please tell me what I can improve to make these videos better. Because really these videos should be as entertaining and fun to you as the process of building these projects is to me. So please help me improve them. I'll see you in the next one.